What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A03s. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks for this phone to help you get more familiar with the device. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. This is a really easy thing to do. All you need to do is go to your settings and go to wallpaper. In a lot of other phones, you'll find the wallpaper options in the display menu instead, but with Samsung phones, it's actually its own separate menu. So from here, you can either choose wallpapers that are on the phone already, or you can choose from your gallery. You can also get extra wallpapers from the Samsung store. You're also gonna have the option to apply dark mode to wallpaper, so if you have your phone in dark mode, it'll tint the wallpaper in darker colors as well. Now that was easy enough, but there's also a second way to do it while also accessing extra home settings. All you need to do is press and hold a finger on the home screen itself, and this menu is gonna come up. You can customize your wallpapers, themes, widgets, and access additional home screen settings. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to customize your sounds. So we're gonna go to our settings, go to sounds and vibration, and we have a few different options here. As you can see right now, it is in sound mode. So if I get a call, notification, whatever, it's gonna play a sound, but notice vibrate while ringing is not toggled on. If you want it to vibrate and make sounds, be sure to toggle this on. In addition to this, of course, you can turn this to vibrate mode or you can mute it. Underneath this, you can change your ringtone and the notification sound. Now, if you go to the volume section, there's several different volumes that you can change. The first one is the ringtone. The first one is the ringtone. The second one is for media. So if you're watching a video, listening to music, playing a game, that sort of thing, that's what this volume is gonna control. Notifications, so notifications from apps, that sort of stuff. And then system sounds. So if you have typing tones on and stuff like that, that's what this sound is gonna be for. And as you can see here, by default, you're gonna be able to use the volume keys for media. I personally wouldn't change this, but if you want to, you always can. You can also change the vibration pattern of both your calls and notifications, as well as the intensity. There are a couple other things in the sound menu too, so I suggest playing around with these settings and seeing which ones work best for you. The next thing we're gonna go over is notifications. This really goes hand in hand with sounds because both of them can be really useful, but also really disruptive if you have the wrong settings. So we're gonna go back to our settings menu and go to notifications right here. So there are several things you can do. First of all, you can change the notification pop-up style. So by default, it's set to brief, and I personally like it like this, but you can also change it to detailed where it gives you more information about the notification you receive. Another thing you can do, which I personally like a lot, is turn notifications off. So to do this, you're gonna go to more under recently sent, and this is gonna show you all the apps that have recently sent you a notification. Now what I suggest you do is turn off every one that's not really important to you because otherwise you're just gonna get spammed with a bunch of different notifications and that gets really annoying real fast, even more so if you have sounds on. In addition to this, we have the do not disturb, which you don't really need to go here to turn on do not disturb. All you need to do is swipe down your quick menu and do not disturb is somewhere right here. Now if we go to advanced settings, we have even more options. So these are some options for the status bar. As you can see right now, it's defaulted to showing the three most recent notifications on your status bar, but you can also change this to show all notifications, the number of notifications, or none. I personally like it like this, but if you want your status bar to be really minimalistic, you can always change it. Also, you can show and hide the battery percentage here. Pretty cool. And then you can see things like conversations, floating notifications. That's a pretty cool one. So for example, if you have Facebook Messenger or something like that, that's gonna make your conversations show up as little bubbles on the screen. So you can go do other things without closing your conversation. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to turn on the dark theme. This is really straightforward. All you need to do is go to your settings, go to display, and dark theme is right up here. As you can see, it is defaulted to light, but you can turn dark mode on by selecting dark. Now, if we go to dark mode settings, you can see some other options. First of all, with the adaptive color filter, that's gonna tint the screen in an amber color to filter out some blue light. A lot of the time, this is technically a separate feature, 
but it's so commonly used with dark mode that it looks like Samsung just decided to put them together. In addition to that, you can also schedule dark mode to have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or whatever other time you want. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to take a screenshot. This is a really easy thing to do, but if you're new to Android or smartphones in general, it might be a little tricky. So to take a screenshot, all you need to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time, like this. The screen's gonna flash. This little bar is gonna show up where you can share it, edit it, whatever you want. And as you can see, it goes by really fast, so you'll probably miss it. And if you do, all you need to do is open your notification center and it's gonna be right here. Keep in mind, you don't have to press and hold the power key and volume down key. You just have to click them together once and it's gonna take a screenshot. Now I say that because there are a lot of phones out there nowadays where you do have to press and hold the buttons, but with this phone, you don't. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your system navigation. As you can see down here, we got three buttons, pretty typical for Androids, but there's another type of navigation that's a little bit more minimalistic and some people might like better. So you're gonna to go to settings, go to display, go down to navigation bar. And as you can see right here, we got a few different options. The first thing you can do is change the order of the buttons or you can go to swipe gestures. When we have this option on, the buttons are gonna be replaced by this little bar. And to go to your home screen, all you gotta do is swipe your finger up from the bottom. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger up instead. And to go back, swipe from left to right or right to left. Gesture navigation is a really cool feature, but it's not for everyone. So I do recommend playing around with it and seeing if you like it. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the edge panel. One of the coolest features on Samsung phones with the more recent versions of Android is the edge panel. This is basically a giant collapsible shortcut bar that can help you get to things a lot faster. A lot of Samsung phones nowadays have them activated by default, but with this phone, we don't get that. So I'm gonna show you how to turn it on. So first things first, go to settings, go to display, and go to edge panel right at the bottom. Now you'll have this little tab right here, and if you pull it out, the edge panel is gonna open up. You can also edit it and customize it right down here. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your screen lock. This is yet another simple feature. All you gotta do is go to settings, go to lock screen, and right up here where you see screen lock type, we're gonna select this, enter your current pin, and now you can choose between swipe, pattern, pin, or password. You can also toggle on and off fingerprints and face unlock. Now that being said, if you don't have fingerprints or face unlock set up, you're gonna have to go to a separate menu in order to do this. So we're gonna go back to our main settings menu and go to biometrics and security right below lock screen. Here you can set up fingerprints, face recognition, or both. And once you select one and enter your pin, the on-screen instructions are gonna walk you through everything else. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your screen timeout time. This is a really cool thing to be able to change because sometimes if you have it too short, your phone is probably gonna be falling asleep a lot when you're trying to do stuff with it. And if it's too long, the display is gonna stay on and it'll drain your battery a lot. So to change your screen timeout time, we're gonna go to settings, go to display, Go to screen timeout. As you can see, mine is set to 30 minutes, but you can make it as short as 15 seconds. This is one of those things that's really based on personal preference, so I recommend playing around with it to decide which time works best for you. But this was my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A03s. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more about the phone itself, be sure to watch my full review as well. But that's it for this video. As always, I will see you in the next one.